heavenly King, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth, who are in all places and fill all things, treasury of blessings and giver of life, come and dwell within us and cleanse us from every blemish and save our souls, O Blessed One. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill among men. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, goodwill among men. O Lord, you shall open my lips. My mouth will show forth your praise. Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. In peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace that comes from heaven above, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. For peace throughout the whole world, for the welfare of the holy churches of God, and for the union of them all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy church and for those who enter it with faith, devoutness, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. For our holy ecumenical patriarch Bartholomew, the Archbishop of Constantinople, let us pray to the Lord. For our most reverend Metropolitan Gregory, for our esteemed priesthood, for the diaconate in Christ, for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. For the honorable government of our country and all civil authorities, and for our armed forces, let us pray to the Lord. For this city and for every city, village, and country, and for those who with faith dwell in them, let us pray to the Lord. For healthful seasons, for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. For those who travel by land, by sea, and by air, for the sick, the suffering, and for those who are held in captivity, and for their safety and salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, and want, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Commemorating our ever holy, ever pure, ever blessed, and glorious Lady, the birth giver of God and ever Virgin Mary, together with all the saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. For to you are due all glory, honor, and adoration to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. The Lord our God is what is beyond description. His glory surpasses all understanding. His mercy is without limit. His love for mankind is beyond expression. O Master, in your kindness, look down upon us in this holy church and bestow upon us in this prayer with us your abundant mercies and compassion. O Lord, save your people and bless your inheritance. Preserve the fullness of your church. Sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them by your divine might and forsake us not to put our hope in you. For yours is the might and yours are the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and endeavor unto the ages of ages. Amen. O Lord, you have permitted this community to pray together in harmony. You promise that you will grant the request of two or three gathered in your name. Please fulfill all the petitions of your servants that are beneficial to them, giving us in this world the knowledge of your truth and life eternal in the world to come. 
O oh God, our gracious, that you love mankind, and to you we render glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the age of the world. Of our life, for the 
prayers of the birth giver of God and of all the saints who have pleased you from the beginning of time. Oh Christ, glory to your kingdom, to your plan of salvation for you alone. Son and to the Holy Spirit now and ever and forever.
Let us be attentive as we listen to the Holy Gospel of peace be unto all. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Let us be attentive. The Lord spoke this parable. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus within himself, God, I thank thee that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week, I give tithes of all that I get. But the tax collector standing far off would not even lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast saying, God be merciful to me a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, but he who exalts himself will he who humbles himself will be exalted. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Christ is among us. Last Sunday, we spoke about the repentance of the chief tax collector Zacchaeus, how after seeing Jesus from his perch in the sycamore tree, he boldly stood before the Lord and confessed his sins then voluntarily gave half of his possessions to the poor and repaid fourfold to anyone he had cheated. Christ proclaimed that salvation had come to his soul that very day for his act of repentance. This morning, we hear another confession, an example of a confession made the wrong way. The Lord offers the parable of the publican and the Pharisee. Two men went up to the temple to pray, Jesus says. One a Pharisee considered by the public to be a righteous leader by, to, of the people. The other one, a publican, a tax collector, a cheater despised by the people. Now the Pharisee stood in his place of honor in the temple and prayed within himself, God, I thank you that I am not like other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this man, this evil tax collector. 
I fast twice a week. I give tithes of all that I possess. I do everything that I am supposed to do. This is an example of a bad confession. People, people often thank God with their mouth, but mentally magnify themselves. Now first, this Pharisee draws near to the Lord and thanks God that he is not sinful like other men. The Pharisee begins his confession speaking about all of the sins that he thinks he doesn't commit. Hello, God. Well, I didn't steal. I didn't lie to anyone. I didn't cheat on my wife. I didn't kill anyone. I didn't swear. I didn't gossip about anyone. He probably even had a list in front of him saying, well, I didn't do this one, and I didn't do this one, and I didn't do that one. The Pharisee does even worse by thinking in his mind how more sinful other people are than he is. He judges so many people without even knowing them by saying, I am pretty good to, compared to other people. I'm not so bad. Now, in, this, in addition to this bad beginning, he next proudly proclaims how good he is. I fast twice a week. I give offerings to the temple, just like I'm supposed to do. The Pharisee met the minimum requirements of the law. He paid his church dues, and he felt that that was sufficient for his salvation. Now that he paid his church dues, he could be buried from the church and vote at the annual meeting. Contrast this confession with Zacchaeus's, who gave half of his possessions away. Not just tithe, he gave half of them away to the poor. It is easy to see who found salvation with the Lord God. What the Pharisee does not realize is that his sin of pride kept him from seeing how just how sinful he was. The sin of pride was his downfall. The Holy Fathers of the Church write that pride is the denial of God and invention of the devil, the mother of condemnation. Lucifer, in heaven, whose name means light bringer, was cast down from heaven because of the sin of pride. He had no other sin but pride alone. And he lost the kingdom of heaven from that one sin of pride. He believed that he could judge better and knew better than God. A wise monk once said, suppose that there are 12 shameful passions. If we don't have 11 of the 12, but have the sin of pride, it will fill up the remaining 11. When the demon of pride gets a foothold in someone, he appears first in his sleep as an angel of light. Lucifer, light bearer. And he promises the man great things, great glories, great wealth. In turn, the proud man has no need of the devil, for he has become the devil and the enemy to himself. A proud man scorns the meek, thinking that they are weak, according to society's measures. Pride blinds us from our sinfulness. It makes us believe that we are free from the sinful passions and leads us to believe that we have no sin. <laughs> Be very careful of that kind of thought. St. John the theologian writes in his letters that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Furthermore, he says, if we say we have not sinned, we make God a liar and his word is not in us. But if we walk in the light of God and have fellowship with one another, then the blood of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, cleanses us from all sins. In this parable, Jesus contrasts the two ways that we are to approach God in confession and prayer. Both men stood before God. One exalted himself, 
and spoke of his greatness, and the other could barely lift his eyes to heaven. One spoke in great length with many words, and the other could only muster up five. Have mercy on me, the sinner, as tears welled up inside of him, and only those five words could come out to express his sorrow. One was blinded, but blinded by the sin of pride, the other humbled to the depth of his soul. It is this sinful man who through a sincere, simple confession and prayer becomes justified in the eyes of God. On this, the first Sunday of the Lenten Triodion, as we come into the church and to the temple of our Lord and stand in prayer before him, let us learn this great lesson of the publican and the Pharisee. Let it seep down into the very depths of our hearts and our souls as we hear the words of wisdom from our Lord, Jesus Christ, who says, For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled, and he who humbles himself will be exalted in the kingdom of heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Christ is among us. Let us all say with our whole soul and with our whole mind, let us say, O Lord Almighty God of our fathers, we pray to you, hear us and have mercy. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy, we pray to you, hear us and have mercy. Furthermore, we pray for our holy ecumenical patriarch Bartholomew, the Archbishop of Constantinople, and for our most reverend Metropolitan Gregory, for our spiritual fathers and all other clergy, and for all our brethren in Christ, for their welfare, peace, health, salvation, and for the remission of their sins, and that the Lord our God may prompt and help them in all things. O physician of souls and bodies, we pray that you continue to come to our aid now during the global spread of the coronavirus. May the sick regain their strength and health, and as they worry and grieve, defend them from further illness and despair. We offer thanks to you for those who have recovered. Grant rest to those who have reposed. Be with the families of those who are sick and those who have died. Heal us from our fear, which prevents nations from working together and neighbors from helping one another. Remove from us all pride, which can make us claim immunity to a disease that knows no borders. Give wisdom and strength to our president, our federal government, our state governments, together with the leaders of all nations, and give them foresight to act with charity and true concern for the well-being of the people they serve. Be with the doctors, nurses, researchers, and all medical professionals who seek to heal those affected and who put themselves at risk in the process. Whether we are home or abroad, surrounded by many people suffering from this illness or only a few, we pray that you stay by our side and grant us courage and peace. Let us all say, O Lord, hear us and have mercy. Desires of the pleasures of the desires and pleasures of the flesh, for the serve you as something grand and inspiring, even for the heavenly powers themselves. 
Furthermore, we pray for those who give their offerings and do good works in this holy and venerable church, for those who labor in its service, for those who sing, and for all the people here present to await your great and abundant mercy, for those who have shown us kindness, and for all Orthodox Christians. For you are a merciful God who loves mankind, and we give glory to you, uh, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, always, now, and ever, and forever. And yet, because of your ineffable, boundless man for love, boundless love for mankind, though in nature unchanged and unchangeable, you became both a man and our high, high priest. And as Master of all, conferred upon us the power, sacred power of offering this liturgical and bloodless sacrifice. For you alone, our Lord, our God, rule over all things in heaven and on earth, and are born of the throne of the cherubim, and are Lord of the seraphim, and the king of Israel. Who alone are holy and abide in the saints. So pray to your only gracious to him, and look favor upon your sinful and unworthy servant, and cleanse my heart and soul from all thought of evil. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, enable me, who have been clothed by the grace of the priest, to stand before your holy altar offer the sacrifice of your most pure body and precious blood. I come to you with my head bowed low and implore you to turn not your face away from me nor exclude me from among your children, but allow these gifts to be offered to you by me, your sinful and unworthy servant. For, you, for it is you, O Christ, who offer and are offered to receive them. I receive them. We give glory to you, to your eternal Father, and your life-giving Spirit. And we'll never Represent the cherubim and is sing to the life giving Trinity, the thrice holy, and let us not lay aside our earthly cares, that we may raise on high the King of all, who comes invisibly escorted by angelic hosts. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. O God, be merciful to me, the sinner. Bishop of Constantinople, his 
eminence, our most reverend metropolitan Gregory, venerable priesthood, the diaconate in Christ, the monastic orders and clerics of the church, honorable government of this country and its armed forces, the blessed and ever remembered and founders and benefactors of this holy church, for the servants of God, those who are celebrating their birthday this week, Geraldine Lacatus, Agnes Bukovecki, Julia Gilchrist, Anna Zucchelli, Anne Fishball, Linda Butchak, Thomas Butchak II, Protodeacon Oleg Aminov, Annie Mashurda, Simeon Kobo, and Laura Butchak. For, for the servants of God, those who are joining us via the internet for their health and long life. For the departed servants of God, Greta Horbal, Peg Ryan, Nicholas Chupka Sr., Helen Chupka, Agnes Chupka, and Jane Teplicki, Peter Dutko, Donna Urena, Joseph Gamilla, James Neff, Francis Rogo, and Mary Matrician for their blessed repose. And all you Orthodox Christians, always, now, and ever, and forever. Good desire on in your good pleasure, rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in right sacrifices of burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then they will lay rules upon your altar. Lord God, man, you receive the sacrifice of praise for those that call upon you with all right. Set the prayer rest is also bring us to your holy altar. May bless the offer of Jesus. Let his sacrifice may be pleasing to you that the good spirit of grace rest upon us and upon these gifts that are before us and all your people. of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all holy, gracious, and life-giving Spirit, now and ever and forever. with one accord we may confess I will love you O Lord my strength the Lord is my support and my refuge the doors in wisdom, let us be attentive.
stand aright, let us stand with fear, let us be attentive, so that we may offer the holy sacrifice in peace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us. Existing yet ever the same, you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit, you brought all us out of non existence into being, and when we have fallen, you raise us up again and left nothing undone to lead us to heaven and bestow upon us your future kingdom. All this we give thanks to you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. All things we know and do not know, the manifest and hidden benefits bestowed upon us. We thank you also for this liturgy, which we have found worthy to receive from our hands, even though there stand before you thousands of archangels, tens of thousands of angels, cherubim and seraphim, six-winged and many-eyed, who soar aloft on the wings and who sing, cry out, and proclaim the triumphant hymn, saying, With these blessed powers, O Lord and lover of mankind, we too cry out and say, Holy are you and all holy, you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. Holy are you and all holy and sublime is your glory. You loved your world so much that you gave your only begotten Son, that everyone who believes in him should not perish but should have everlasting life. And after he had come and fulfilled everything in the divine plan for our redemption, on the night on which he was betrayed, or rather on the night on which he gave himself up for the life of the world, he took bread into his holy, all pure and immaculate hands, and having given thanks, blessed, sanctified and broke it, and gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is broken for you, for the remission of sins. In like manner after the supper, he took the cup, saying, All of you drink of this, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Remembering, therefore, the saving command and all that has been done for us, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection on the third day, the ascension into heaven, the sitting at the right hand, and the second and glorious coming, and offering to you yours of your own in behalf of all and for all. Furthermore, we offer to you the spiritual and bloody sacrifice, and we implore, pray, and beg of you, send down your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts lying here before us, and make this bread the precious body of your Christ, and that which is in this cup the precious blood of your Christ, changing them by your Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, amen. 
that to those who partake of them they may be for the purification of soul, for the remission of sins, for the communion in the Holy Spirit, for the full participation in the kingdom of heaven, for confidence in approaching you, and not for judgment nor condemnation. Furthermore, we offer to you this liturgical sacrifice for those who have fallen asleep in the faith. Our forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, fathers, confessors, and sinners, and every righteous soul are perfect in the faith. Especially for our ever holy, ever pure, ever blessed and glorious Lady, the birth giver of God and ever Virgin Mary. Through the prayers of the Holy Prophet, forerunner of Christ and Baptist John, the Holy Glorious and Lustrous Apostles and of all the saints, through whose prayers visit us, O God. Remember us, O Lord, the souls of the Lord, those who are from this people, and the resurrection of the Lord. Sacrifice for the whole world, for the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, for those living in chastity and honor, for our honorable government as well for us to spend the morning a peaceful life, that's sharing their life, that, that, a, that a peaceful life, that sharing their tranquility may lead a calm life in all piety and purity. Glory to the Holy Consubstantial Trinity, always on government. Remember among the first, O Lord, our holy ecumenical patriarch Bartholomew, the Archbishop of Constantinople, and our most reverend Metropolitan Gregory. Preserve them for your holy churches in peace, in safety, in honor, and in health for many years, so that they may faithfully dispense the word of your truth. And grant that with one voice and one heart we may glorify and praise your most honorable and sublime name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Amen. May the mercies of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of you. Having commemorated all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the precious gifts which have been offered and sanctified, let us pray to the Lord. That our God who loves mankind, having received them on his holy, most heavenly and mystical altar, as an aroma of spiritual fragrance, may bestow upon us in return the divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit, let us pray. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, and want, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. For a day that in all things will be perfect, holy, peaceful, and without sin, let us beseech the Lord. For an angel of peace, a faithful guide, a guardian of our souls and bodies, let us beseech the Lord. For the pardon and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us beseech the Lord. For all that is good and profitable to our souls, and for the peace of the world, let us beseech the Lord that we may pass the remainder of our life in peace and repentance. Let us beseech the Lord for a Christian ending of our life without pain and shame, peaceful and for a good account at the fearful judgment seat of Christ. Let us beseech the Lord. 
Having prayed for the unity of faith and the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. And make us worthy, O Lord, with full confidence and without condemnation, to dare to call upon you, God, our Heavenly Father, and to say to you, is the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit now and ever and forever. by your immeasurable power of fashion all things and through the multitude of your mercies have brought all things from non-existence into being. O Master, look down from heaven upon those who are bowing their heads to you, for they bow not to flesh and blood, but to you, O awesome God. Therefore, O Master, distribute equally these gifts in a manner beneficial to each according to their need. Stay with those upon the seas, journey with those who travel by land and air, and cure the sick, O healer of our souls and bodies. Through the grace and bounties and love towards mankind of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all holy, gracious, and life-giving Spirit, now and ever and forever. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. O oh God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Be attentive, uh, holy things are for the holy. The Lamb of God is broken and distributed, broken and 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 of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe, O Lord, and confess that you are truly the Christ, Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the first. O Son of God, accept me today as a communicant of your mystical supper, for I will not speak of this mystery to your enemies, nor like Judas will I give you a kiss, but like the penitent thief I confess to you. O Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. O Master, remember me when you come into your kingdom. O Holy One, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Let the partaking of your holy mysteries, O Lord, be not for my judgment nor condemnation, but for the healing of my soul and my body. O Lord, I also believe and confess that this which I'm about to receive is truly your most precious body and truly your life-giving blood, which I pray I may worthily receive for the remission of all of my sins and for life everlasting. O God, be merciful to me, a sinner. O God, cleanse me of my sins and have mercy on me. O Lord, forgive me, for my sins are many. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Forgive me if I sin against you in any way, either thought, whether voluntary or involuntary. Forgive me if I sin against you in any way, either thought, whether voluntary or involuntary. The precious and all holy
bless the Lord. Amen. divine, holy, most pure, immortal, heavenly, and life-creating awesome mysteries of Christ. Our eyes, let us worthily give thanks to the Lord. Help us. 
us, to save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Having prayed that this day will be perfect, holy, peaceful, and without sin, let us commend ourselves in one another and our whole life to Christ our God. For you are our sanctification, and to you we give glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and forever. Let us depart in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. O oh Lord, blessing those who bless you and sanctifying those who put their trust in you. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Preserve the fullness of your church. Sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them by your divine might and forsake us not to put our hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to your churches, to your priests, to the honorable government of our country, to its armed forces, and to all your people. For every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from you, the Father of lights. You will give glory and thanksgiving and worship to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, always, now, and ever, and forever. grace and love for mankind, always, now, and ever, and forever. risen from the dead through the prayers of his most pure mother, through the prayers of a holy father among the saints, John Chrysostom, Archbishop of Constantinople, through the prayers of all the saints, have mercy on us and save us, for he is gracious and he loves mankind. Amen. Have a seat a moment. Birthday greetings are extended this week to Geraldine Lakatis, Agnes Bukovecki, Julia Gilchrist, Anna Zucchelli, Anna Fishbaugh joining us via the internet, Glinda Buchak, Thomas Buchak II, Protodeacon Ole Gominov, Annie Mishurda, Simeon Kobol, happy birthday Simeon, and Laura Buchak. We welcome those joining us via the internet and we thank them for being with us this morning. We have a new camera, so those joining us via the internet, let me know if it's uh, pretty good or not. We will have Antidoran this morning for the Feast of the Three Holy Hierarchs. The Feast of the Presentation of Our Lord into the Temple is Tuesday, Divine Liturgy, 9 a.m. Vespers, Monday evening at 6. Much to read in a bulletin. We will have a Panahita this morning um, for Peg Ryan, Greta Horbo, Nicholas Chupka Jr., Helen, Agnes, and Jane Teplicki, Peter Dutko, Donna Arena, Joseph Camiller, James Neff, and Francis Rogel, and Mary Matrician. At this time, we will have the oath of office for our newly elected church officers and curators. So please, at this time, the church officers and curators, please come forward.
Jane. 